Okay folks, today we are going to be doing a lesson on simplifying radicals. Um, a radical is this square root sign that you've previously probably only considered to be a square root, but it's just that symbol there. Um, we know that there are things like cubed roots, and then later in life you'll hear about fourth roots, fifth roots, etc, etc. When you are simplifying a radical, uh, your goal is to only have one radical sign in your final answer and you want the smallest number possible to be underneath your radical sign. And how are we going to get there? Well, we're going to get there by using our perfect squares. And our perfect squares are numbers where you can take the square root and it comes out to also be a whole number. Um, the first seven perfect squares would be 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared, which is 4, 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared at 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, and 7 squared is 49. So those are going to be um, the most important squares that you need to know are probably not going to work with anything larger than that. Um, we have two helpful rules as well. Our first rule says that if you have two radicals that are multiplied by each other, it is the same thing as having one large radical and the two numbers underneath it. So root A times root B is equal to root AB, just like root A divided by root B is equal to the square root or the root of a over b. So those are the two rules we are going to be working with and applying in a few examples here. So let's take a look at our first examples. Root 2 times root 5. Remember that we are just going to multiply what is inside the brackets together because we want the fewest number of radical signs uh, possible. So root 2 times root 5 is going to be root 10, okay? We cannot reduce that. We always need to be thinking, is there a perfect square hidden in here? There is not. So we're just going to leave it as root 10. Another example is root 8. Well, I know that 8 is the same thing as 2 times 4, and 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to break my 8 up here. I'm going to say root 8 is going to be the same thing as root 2 times 4, which is the same thing as root 2 times root 4. I can take the square root of 4, that gives me 2. So my final answer is going to be 2 times root 2. We always want to have our whole numbers out in front. That's just a good communication, a good stylistic thing to help you stay organized. If I were to write my 2 at the end here, it might look like it's the square root of 22. Okay? So you see how I broke that up. I said, okay, are there any perfect squares that are factors of my number here? In this case, it was the number 4, and so we split it up, broke up our radicals, and then took the root where we could. Okay? Let's do another example here. Root 75 is a great example root 75, okay? So we know that root 75, if you think about the factors, I know that root 75 is going to be the same thing as root 25 times 3, because 25 times 3 is 75. So let's break that up. This is the same thing as root 25 times the square root of 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so I get 5 root 3 as my answer there. Okay, let's look at a little bit more challenging questions here. 10 times the square root of 162. Okay, that is going to be a great question. So when you're faced with a large number like this, and we don't really know off the top of our hand what the factors of 162 are, this is when I'm just going to pull out my calculator and start dividing. I'm going to say, let's just take a stab, is 162 divisible by, let's do 36. No, it's going to give me a decimal. Okay. Is 162 divisible by 64? Also a decimal. 162 divided by 16? No dice. 
162 divided by 9. Okay, that gives me 18. That's not so bad. We can work with that. I know that 162, 1 divided by 9 is 18, so I can break this up as 10 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 18. Come on. But I also know that 18 can be broken up into two parts once again. So I'm going to have 10 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, because 9 times 2 is 18. Let's go ahead and take our square roots here. Root 9 is 3, root 9 is 3, and we're going to leave our root 2 here. So this now becomes 10 times 3 times 3, so that's going to be 30, 90 times the square root of 2. And now we have reduced this all the way down. We only have one square root, and we have the smallest number possible under there. Let's take a look at our next example, negative 2 times the square root of 108. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to pull up my calculator, and I'm going to say, okay, let's do 108. Let's try divided by 81. No dice. 108 divided by 64. 108 divided by 49, 108 divided by 36. Aha, there we go. 108 divided by 36. That works. It gives me 3. So this is going to be, instead of root 108, I'm going to write root 36 times root 3. This is going to be the square root of 36 is 6 times root 3. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12 times the square root of 3. Good. Okay, let's deal with the second problem here. F, 2 root 3 times 5 root 6. You recall when we have two roots beside each other, we have to multiply the ones that are inside. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But we also need to multiply the ones that are on the outside. So the 2 and the 5 will also be multiplied together. 2 times 5 is 10. And then we have our root sign. 3 times 6 is 18. We know that 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2. So root 18 is the same thing as root 9 times root 2. Root 9 is 3 all times root 2, and that gives me 30 times root 2. Okay, let's do two more examples. Eighteen minus root 32 all divided by 4. Let's focus on breaking up this root 32 here. Root 32, remember I'm looking for perfect squares, and my perfect square is going to be 16 because I know that root 32 is the same thing as root 16 times root 2, all divided by 4. Root 16 is 4, and then we have times root 2, all divided by 4. Okay, now we can go ahead and we can divide everything here to reduce our fraction because that's always just good practice. I'm just going to draw a little arrow over here. Let's divide this out. Here we can divide everything by 2. 18 by 2, 4 by 2, and 4 by 2. So let's do this. This is going to give me 9 minus 2 root 2 all divided by 2. So we reduced all of the whole numbers there. So we reduced the 4, the 4, and the 18. We divided everything by 2 to reduce our fraction, and this is now our final answer. If you wanted to keep going and if you wanted to continue, you could break this up and you could say, well, this is 9 over 2 minus 2 root 2 over 2. Divide out those 2s, and we have 9 over 2 minus root 2, either or, so either this answer or our last answer here, 
those are both perfectly acceptable. And let's do one more example here. Three times or three minus root 72 divided by three. Root 72, we are looking for our perfect squares. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. So let's do root 72 is root nine times root eight. Well, I know that nine is a perfect square, so that's nice and easy first. But I also know that eight has a perfect square in it. It has four. So I'm going to leave this as root nine. And then I'm going to do root 4 times root 2, all divided by 3. We can go ahead and we can evaluate those roots. Root 9 is 3, root 4 is 2, and then we have root 2, all divided by 3. 3 times 2 is 6, so this becomes 6 root 2 divided by 3. I can divide all of these terms by 3. 3 divided by 3 is just going to be 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We have our root 2 tagging along. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So our final answer is going to be 1 minus 2 root 2. And that's it.